Hi there. Hi, how are you doing? Not too bad. That is this call. Yes, speaker. Hi, Carl. Sorry to drag you out of the bar. No, it's okay. <laughs> how are you? Good, just very busy. Um, doing a lot of uh, things in the respect of radio broadcasting and working on my album right now. So, right. Uh, a lot of sleep this night and uh, stress. Yes, well, that's all. That, that's all part of it, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, show business, I think. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you've been doing this for 18 years now. You know, when are you actually going to slow down? I don't think I will, actually. Um, I think that uh, A, there's going to be too much demand on what I'm doing. People will seem to enjoy it uh, eventually. And so I'll, I'll enjoy it immensely as well. Mm -hmm. I think once you're into something, you just never stop. It's like the rolling stone. It's like a 35-year yeah. kind of, uh, elusive uh, kind of... Uh, uh, Band which is still prolific today. Yeah. Like only one reason why they're still here because they enjoy it. And yeah. You know, if, if you ever ask the Stones when they're in, in, in the in the sixties, <laughs> and if you, you'll ever go for it, would have been laughing over the last thing for thirty years. So. Yeah. True. True. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, so you've got a bit of catching up to do there, but in the meantime, you are <laughs> you are classified. Um, I don't know how you how you take to it, but being the greatest DJ in the world, how does one actually sort of attain the title? You know, what is the criteria? Um, I think the criteria, in a sense, is uh, being around for 27 years as, as a DJ, mm. 18 years professionally. Mm -hmm. the, it's the attitude towards it, really. It's, it's not about, you know, the perfect mix or the best records or being DJ in, 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 all, the, in all the fantastic places. Mm. You know, you, you create entertainment in, you know, in the most uh, uh, you know, unbelievable places, you know, mm. in, in dirty warehouses, mm. some, some bedrooms, mm. you know, um, a recreational hall outdoors in a field, you know. Mm. You know, you, as an artist, you have something which you which you give to people as a part of enjoyment. And uh, you know, half the time, it's not even to do with music. You mm -hmm. know, I talk to people. Um, it's the way how I conduct myself as an artist, and, and also hopefully inspire people to go and take what I have and to carry it on. Mm. And uh, and this is the thing as an overall person, which which makes you in a sense quote by quote great. Mm. Because of what people how they relate to yourself. Mm. So it's really, it's not even just about DJing, it's, it's what they see, see, see as a person. Right, that right. Creates this aura of uh, the world's greatest in the sense of, of well, how people perceive me. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've never really, I've never really set out to, to become, you know, where I am, where I am today. Right. But um, it's, it's, it's obvious that, uh, uh, that, that I have a lot more than a lot of other DJs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I say, you, you obviously have a lot to offer, but... Uh, as I say, obviously, uh, the, I mean, the, the whole dance culture, um, you know, I think a couple of years ago was classified as obviously being a fad, uh, but that isn't the yeah. case now, obviously, because um, I think it's lasted a lot longer and obviously it's, it's gone a lot further. Um, do, you, do you actually, yeah, do you actually sort of see a ceiling at all on its growth? Um, well, it's, it's going to carry on now. I mean, it's, there's going to be something uh, in the sense of uh, the millennium, which Gonna, which is going to carry on the legacy of dance music, which is going to take it to the next step. Mm. Um, so, you know, you had your 60s and your 70s and your 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, the 90s have been a year of DJs. Yeah. And all that's going to happen here is that uh, things are just going to develop with the new school of people that are growing into the music today. Mm. I mean, the people now who are growing into the music today, what might even, you won't even know about, about Rolling Stones. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. You know, with these people because of, of, of the generation. Yes. Now you're going to have a new generation, which which, which obviously dance well, dance has become much more prolific. Yeah. So with that, it just carries on mm. to, to different avenues. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, it's going to be even further reaching than myself because I mean, it's, it's in the next five years, I will, I will probably spend my DJing down to a serious minimum. Mm. But uh, then myself is developing into making more and more music, mm. uh, which will carry on. Mm. Situation that I have as an as a, as a artist. Yes, because but, um, yeah. what you go, this is what you're going to find in the future. Mm, because I mean, obviously, people are going to be referencing you in the future as well as being, you know, as being one of the, you know, I mean, as as you would reference Rolling Stones and, and David Bowie, they would then obviously reference you. Mm -hmm. yeah. is, is is that exactly. so? This this, 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 this is how it goes. I mean, you don't go back as far as Martin Rocky, Martin Rocky, I know, and. The, and uh, and Muhammad Ali, mm, mm. kind of like they, they are classed as the greats of their time. Yeah. Uh, but then they had their own sugar and letters mm. up to the banks, up to the people who were saying. So it, it, you know, this is this is how you, uh, how I like to view it because of, of course we're all artists in our own right, but we're in our own time. Mm. So all I like to say is that there's a legacy of, of, of what I achieved for myself as an individual person. Sure, sure. Is that sort of the aim with um, 
ultimate music management that you can basically be responsible for, you know, actually moving with, you know, um, with the growth of, uh, of the whole culture. Yeah, I mean, the idea really of that was, was uh, in my early days, uh, I couldn't find uh, a, a company that could represent what I was actually about mm. as, a, as a DJ uh, show artist to, to develop what I had, mm. rather than me really just be kind of an agency to, because, because of my popularity of the time, mm. got booked on that basis. Mm. It would have been unfair to just to be like Carl Gott was of that time because, you know, the rave area era was something which was, uh, of course, gave me a very serious high profile, mm. but then you have to carry on from that. Sure, sure. The management company, um, it, you know, it allowed me to be represented in such a way of, 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 uh, of understanding what was the actual needed, but also get other sorts of respect and, mm. and, uh, and, uh, and then also to look at what we're doing is, is, is very serious. It's, it's quite much, you know, the thing is happening now, get the money. Mm. You know, get the money now before it all finishes. You know, yes, yeah. Never really finish. Yeah, yeah. It's something which can be developed. So, yeah. so that sort of attitude goes on, goes on, goes on to all the other uh, DJs and artists that I have on my mind. But that's the way how I've been handled through my career. Right. And I can set that myself. Mm. Is that also the thinking with Worldwide Ultimatum? Is uh, that you can also then control the music aspect of it as well? Well, again, I couldn't find a company that could uh, represent my music or how I felt about when I was making music. Mm. I always thought that record companies put, put, put uh, music out by artists mm. and represent them for what they did, not because of now Speed Garage, and now we make most of Speed Garage records and then and put, them, put the records out. If the record's crap, it's crap. Mm. Um, mm. But I think the artists are the ones that get a really sound deal because it's kind of like, if you just ask music, you know, you're, you're only supposed to be a one hit wonder. And yeah, that's well, that's the thing. But, uh, you know, I, I know for a fact that I can make an album worth music and I've always proved that. Mm -hmm. And now, now we're getting on to work on the second album. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that, that, that's my carry on. That's certain. And also, that's, that's something that I know that I have to give or, or have to offer. Mm -hmm. So there's the label thing for, for what it is as well, by getting behind it. Right, right. Mm. And is the UK as as, well, as excited um, as as they were? I'd say uh, obviously at the at the beginnings. I mean, obviously, um, you know, from Asset House onwards. But it, is that excitement uh, still sort of evident? You know, in, in in the music industry at the moment, as far as yeah, what you do. It's, it's a it's a it's a hard one to really judge. But from where I'm standing, I mean, just this weekend alone um, on Thursday night, it was the self of Josh Green playing Ultimate Face. Yeah, and uh, and he did that first live like, internet broadcast. Wonderful. And, uh, and it was an amazing uh, a technical achievement based mm. on what what, it, what that stands for. Yeah. And broadcast to the people obviously to the rest of the world to listen. Mm. Um, and so therefore you've got this pinpoint of this tiny club, two fifty people. Mm. You know, to the world that we had about two or three hundred hits within five hours. T was, was amazing. Gee, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good. I mean, um, we had broadcast, we only um, advertised it two days before we went on there. Gee, so that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Friday night, I played a, I played a, a club called Bar Rumba, right. which is uh, a guy called Adam Freeman and the MC, who's just, and it's just like, it's basically, it's just pure future breakbeats. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. music, no set, no nothing. Jeez. But I enjoyed that movie too, and that was just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The people down the road, and that's the night I played on Radio 1, because mm -hmm. it's the name Ramblin. Right. You're trophy paint, too many people, so. Jeez. That was my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just it wasn't just me, you know. So therefore, you know, people uh, are of eighteen subjects to this music, of course. But but secondly, you know, the doors are open to to to, to justify yourself by going out and having a good time. And, sure. You know, people are still excited by the development of it. Yes. It's a race that we'll all go. Mm, mm, mm. People have found what they, they like playing and what they like being involved in. Yes. Yeah, I think they have become more selective, but I think also, um, especially in this country as well, the you know the, the market has grown. I think just based on the fact that it's become as big as it has, and people who wouldn't traditionally sort of go out to a rave or even you know partake in, in in sort of dance music are now you know getting into it just by virtue of the fact that it's uh, you know that you can't ignore it. Yeah, but this, this is this is this is what's happened here because it's. It's, it's not like how punk was, you know, where it only really, it was only a selective few that felt you know, an artist into a to a sense of like, I don't care about society or what, what the regime says, I'm going to have a Mohican. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But it, 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 it was okay of the time, yeah. of, of the time, but it only, it only sprung a few bands and major companies got involved, of course, but mm -hmm. it, not everything felt like that. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Which is obvious, but at least it's not, it was something for everybody. Yes. To, to, 
dry if, if, if they really wanted to be dry. And, and I found, what I found, because a lot of people used to go to heavy metal, heavy metal concerts, mm. but um, I've now turned into, into the big you know, dance parties. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a major switch. I mean, you get people that are into dance parties that are now probably into, into ISIS. But, yeah, yeah. You know, at least, it's, at least it's switching around to a point of that you, you can still appreciate it rather than, well, that's crap and that this is good. Mm. Some people with heavy metal will still be saying what they're about and those people. Mm. Who cares? Mm. And this is, this is this is one development or one thing a lot of people didn't really realise. Mm. But, uh, you know, it was an open door for a lot of people to enjoy. Sure. But, I mean, I think you also find um, with, with a lot of key artists, the likes of Oasis uh, and... Uh, and sort of your, your your current top twenty bunch. If you look at any of the any of the any of their B sides or their remixes, um, it's got a dance flavour attached to it now because of what has happened. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of. I think it's a association um, in the sense of of the space. Yes, stuff is it doesn't bring up the same band as it should do in the sense of the rock era. Mm. But at least there's bands that are in the rock era now. Yes. Mm. It's a brilliant pop track, but mm. it's on the it's on the grass into the gene. Mm. Mm. Um, again, mm. the technology the technology has allowed us mm. for that, that record to be made in such a way that it doesn't, doesn't really matter. We mm. it on all the perform it. Mm. There it is. Mm. And that's where I think the credibility aspect uh, t to the whole dance scene has also, you know, um, come because I mean initially there wasn't that respect because of the fact that everyone said yes it's uh, you know flavor of the month or whatever, um, but now there there seems to be as I say um, major label respect and obviously just general industry respect to the, the likes of yourself and 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 to what you're doing yeah yeah I mean it's, it's difficult at the moment because. Uh, you know, people latch on to things. I mean, you know, you have the happy house thing latched on to, jungle latched on to, maybe it's the garage. You know, and other things before, but the, the what, what, what retains this whole thing really is, is the underground independent labels. Mm -hmm. And also the smaller DJs, smaller underground DJs that still diversify with their music and stand up to what they both believe. Mm -hmm. For myself, mm -hmm. I stand by exactly where the underground is. But with, but with obviously overground appeal of what I've created. Sure. So therefore I'm very fortunate to play something which ain't even made yet. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then cause such an awareness on it that it becomes a good record based on how good it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's good. It is. The record is good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes major labels just wouldn't look, wouldn't, wouldn't look to it until maybe two years' time. Yes. Yeah. You know, which makes, <laughs> which makes the labels look, major labels look silly based on, on the, the, the non belief of the record. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what must be interesting for you know for, for someone like yourself who's been in it uh, for as long as you have, and you know, seeing these uh, you know differences of, of of opinions um, over a period of time, and then and seeing it come to fruition. Oh yeah, mm. it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's, you know, it, it has to be interesting. I think I think you're always going to be looking for a goal at the end of the day, um, and this is what keeps the thing alive as well, because you know you still got people like Luke Slater. This is a serious underground album. Mm -hmm. This is like Stray Beltram and, and Kanye and Richie Horton. Mm -hmm. It's a decent album. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, whether it becomes great or not, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. They're just right behind what they believe in. You've got people who follow that mm -hmm. as, as, as a fan base. You know, they like Richie Horton music. So mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, even if you make a label, don't pick it up. It doesn't matter. You know, it still gets sold like, on the underground. And you find it, you find it, it's his reference to get paid more. Yes. That he would do on radio or in the same situation. Right, right. This is where we take it. That's what it's going to be carrying on. Mm -hmm. and, and if you have to sort of try and single out an aspect of what it is that you do, um, which part do you actually enjoy the most if you had to sort of pinpoint it? It's, it's the live work. It's, it's me getting out there, seeing the crowd, put my first record on, and tip the game. Yep. We have mm -hmm. a good time. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the and then I'll give them the better time than they think they're going to have. Yeah. So they walk away, you know, like, wow, or oh, quite sore. <laughs> <laughs> or Christ, that was uh, <laughs> what a crap I've heard in my life. You know? <laughs> Everybody's got their own opinions, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's the majority rule, and it's the majority like what I do, and then fine, you know. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's that moment of, of uh, 
of a you know if I've if I've made an effort to, to go somewhere mm. that people appreciate it just just on that. Yes. A lot of people don't really understand it because they think that you you know you come you go from your bed to the club. For yes. Like, yes. Think for two hours and then and then leave instantly. Yes. You know, it takes sometimes it could take a lot of coming over to you guys. Mm. It's going to take you know minimum ten hours. Yeah. And, you know, at least minimum six to eight hours before, before I could do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's then do the club and then party after and then so to do exactly the same thing the next day. We've got to the next day. Yeah. It's a bit of a robot, which nobody is or human in the end of the day. Mm, no, it's no. something I'd like to understand a little bit because it's, it's hard work. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I mean, obviously this is going to be your second trip to South Africa. And... Um, what are you actually going to be doing this time round compared to, say, what you did last year in September? Um, well, last time I really enjoyed everything that was going on around me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, seeing the, you know, the, the negative aspects of South Africa, mm -hmm. I don't see the positive aspects of South Africa. Sure. That's one you don't really get to see by control because everything was rosy, you know. Yeah. Picked up on the airport by nice Mercedes, taken to a nice, nice, you know, hotel, hotel yeah. nice restaurant, you know. And you get taken to the uh, club and big sound system, you know, decoration, everybody's happy, then you go back and you leave. Yeah. At least in South Africa, you do drive around, you can see the, the, you know, of what's been going on, the regime of what's been happening. Yeah. You to, to understand that the people are using what they from an outlet for themselves to enjoy it. Absolutely. And uh, with that, it's for me to compliment that and to see the positive side of what, what can happen and what can be developed. Mm. So it was, it was a bit more than just going to the country that they couldn't bring that to a lot of people. Yeah. Or, 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 or what? Or what? Not in that. Just wanted to see someone perform, or, or uh, you know, uh, or, or say to what they believe to be right. So, 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 so give them a, you know, the best time by. Mm. So uh, you know, when I go back again, all I can do really is uh, compliment that, mm, mm. And, uh, and, and then show people the way to the next step forward. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a bit different from, from what it was last year, but. You find it really a lot more great this time. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because you, you you will find it's grown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, it's what we're up to see. Okay. Things we have to develop. Sometimes you know, if it's too big, it can kill itself. You know? Yes. But in a sense, all that you know, it's marketing situation. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because um, you you toured with Fact too. Um, that's uh, probably um, your most recent release here. Um, of that, will you be doing some of that as well? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, with the uh, CWA situation, that we put out the live uh, element of Fact Two yeah. on the CD. Yes. And, uh, and and that is that is a cold cross life right there. Right. We have put out a since the beginning, and uh, it's just to get people captured the spirit of what the mission is going on. And to see that, you know, even though I'm a DJ, it's still live. Mm -hmm. And it's an enjoyment that we do stay next to that, freedom shout out to the people that are fighting back to the show. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the last uh, country that I do this year based on that. Okay. I just wanted to say when I did Fact 2 because it was a follow up from Fact 1 yeah. years ago. Mm. Um, so, uh, so people can still see the development from where I'm standing and what's going on. Excellent. Uh, I truly enjoy it, you know, based on that. Good, good. Carl, that's, that's all from my side. But say thanks very much for your time. No problem at all. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. Seeing you we'll, we'll be seeing you around, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. I said we'll, we'll be there with bells on. Don't, don't you worry about that. <laughs> Okay, well, make yourself known when, it, when you're there. I shall do. And thanks okay. again for your time. Okay, no problem at all. Cheers, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.